Hey there, Michael Greenwood here. So back with another video. And in this video, I'm going to talk about free business growth strategies. So without further ado, no long intros. I'm just going to get stuck straight in to adding value to you as a business owner. So maybe you're a startup business, maybe you've been going a while in, in business, but perhaps you're, you're struggling to grow. Uh, perhaps you've topped out on your word of mouth. Uh, referrals, which, which word of mouth is great, but it can only take you so far. Um, and it does tend to be unpredictable as well. So unlike lead generation, where you can start to get a rhythmic uh, lead flow going on in your business and, and fill your pipeline. So yeah, free business growth strategies. I'm not going to hang around on this video. Um, and it's not going to be surface level. I'm going to give you some strategies that if you take action on these strategies and you take enough action in in the right areas uh, that are right for your business, then it would be unreasonable for you to not get results. You know, th these are inputs, basically. In terms of, uh, I mean, I, I've got an IT degree. It's in, um, it's in the software side of, um, of IT and, and it's back when you could either do kind of networking or software development sorry the software route and these days there's a lot of different permutations of of IT degrees but we were taught a concept um, called garbage in garbage out so this is all about putting the right inputs in to your business on a regular basis as well that's key as well um and then reaping reaping what you sow, basically. So number one, the first business growth strategy that I want to tell you about. And um and like I said, if you if you do take action on this and the right quantity of action in, in the right way and, and with the right fo focus, it would be absolutely unreasonable for you to not get get results. You can always optimize things, but it is about taking action. Um so number one is to expand your market reach. And then you're probably thinking, I know exactly what you're thinking right now. Yeah, but Michael, what does that actually mean? What does, it's okay you telling me, uh, Michael, to expand my market reach. But what, how do I do that? Um, what does that even mean? So let's just kind of distill marketing down you know put it in a mixing pot separate all the components what can you do in terms of expanding your market market reach what can you do in terms of marketing really and more importantly what has worked so far for your business fair enough if you're a startup you're going to have to do a test and measure exercise and find out what you're good at you might be great at cold calling um you might be great at you know putting direct mail messages together even you know like quite old school you might be great at dms but what i would suggest is like that you use what you've already got so if you're good at copywriting then you want to be writing some kind of copy for whatever it is in terms of your marketing but let's take a step back what is marketing marketing is simply getting a bunch of people to to know about your product service brand business um so in order to do that you've got to do outbound or inbound um essentially so you've got a cold call or you've got to post some social media posts and probably do some ads as well and and all that kind of thing um but what i like you to do is a bit of an exercise and the way that i use to do these exercises is got this timer from amazon uh, i'll set it to about 90 minutes uh, that's a work block for me uh, i've done 90 minutes of of deep work of flow based work um and what i would do um if i wanted to expand my my market reach is I'd write down every customer that I've ever had 
I'd write down, I'd add uh, into into like a Google sheet or something like that, or Excel um, Excel sheet. Um, every customer, which sector they're in, if they were profitable, uh, and kind of the complexity of the back end process to to get that service delivery done, get that fulfillment done. Um, and hopefully you've got a big enough data set to start to make some decisions rather than being, you know, buried too deeply in the operational level. I tend to find a lot of businesses that are repeating the same six months again and again. I don't know if that resonates with you. It's like you've got the same turnover, maybe a little bit more, maybe it's less or whatever. If you're repeating the same six months, but you want to grow, then there's usually something wrong uh, in terms of the, uh, the free the free main areas of the business that I see are marketing, sales, and service delivery. So there's some usually something wrong. Um, and in terms of expanding your market reach, um, because you've got finite resources in terms of your time, uh, money that you can invest and in, things like that, and if you've got staff, your people as well, then expanding your market reach can be difficult if you're trying to uh, charge forward all at the same time on multiple fronts so what i mean by that is like probably the worst way you can you can approach things if you're looking at growing is trying to be all things to to all people so in terms of your marketing um if, if it's a scattergun approach especially if if it's almost like the uh, com combine that with a shiny object syndrome approach as well um where you're kind of trying something for three weeks like facebook has and then you're going on to google ads and then you're saying google ads doesn't work let's try seo seo doesn't work let's like try cold calling call 20 people um book one appointment stop cold calling and then do the appointment appointment doesn't go away so cold calling doesn't work the truth is that everything works um I'm not saying that for every hour spent with your skill set and your experience and market forces, that one is not going to get you further ahead than another. But just actually sticking to one thing, just sticking to cold calling, sticking to cold email outreach, sticking to DMs um, consistently over time and just doing that one thing um, will clutter your brain much less, or de declutter your brain, give you a lot less to have to focus on um and i'll probably make you an, an happier business owner there's a lot of businesses where they've just done one thing to one market um over time and got really good uh, results and they just feel like really simple businesses and essentially that's because they've they've cut out a lot of the noise and just start to focus in on on what's working so look th this method works for you um you know whether you're, you've just started in business or whether you've been in business a while and you're just really in the same six months over and over again, but you want to change. There are some businesses where the plateaued and they're happy with that. And, you know, the um, maybe the business owner's tired and there's no uh, fire in the belly for, for any change. And that's another story. You know, I can't help you to get that, um, that enthusiasm or, or that motivation or that discipline even, to, you know, to, to grow your business. But, um, all I can say is whether you're a startup or whether you've been feels like you've been reliving the same six months over and over, stick to one thing, do it over time, um, and then uh, re reap the re reap the rewards of that. Because look, if you if you if you had to um, grow food. Uh, in, in a certain area you know if if uh, there were no supermarkets no um no grocery stores anything like that and you had to learn how to grow your own food again you'd find a way to do it um even if the the, the soil what didn't have the nutrients you'd you'd somehow find a way um you know to to get to get something going um so you can survive you'd you, the you find the knowledge to to go and uh, forage and all that kind of thing. Or you you do something, uh, you you don't or you do something to to get um, some food in. And unfortunately, a lot of business owners they leave it till it's too late almost. Um, 
and it's never really too late because you can always start again but you don't want to lose big you know in business you want to you, you don't want to fail big you know too big um everybody says oh fail your way to success but when you when you fail big that can take you a while to get back on on the horse and and get back into it so um you want to mitigate those risks and and kind of have um relatively small kind of uh, failures to learn and grow and all that kind of thing but even better still just you know read non-fiction books about people who've done they've done it so you can the wise person they um the wise man will learn off from other people's mistakes rather than having to make them uh himself or woman um wise woman so that's the thing and where it all comes down to where it all really boils down to is it is making a start on one thing in order to expand your market reach i'm going to give you some real examples now because we're going a bit abstract but look if you're a logo designer or if you're a baker or if if you're whatever a, a bricklayer or electrician or a plumber or a solar installer you're going to have to get your business and your marketing message in front of people uh, in order to get cash flow going in your business uh, and how, however you're going to do all that uh, the work is not just going to come to you you've got to you've got to either create the marketing assets to to get the inbound uh, going well or you've got to do the outbound or even better just to both because when you do the outbound they'll look for online to see if you're a real person anyway a real business and make sure you're not a scammer uh, and look for social proof and, and things like that so when it comes down to actually expanding your market reach um i would start by trimming the fat um so I'll give you a good example if you if, if you're a logo designer and you do it for any kind of business then perhaps you could just start doing it for legal businesses like lawyers solicitors that kind of thing just just super niche like one one product one one market uh and then you can you can learn all there is about that about that thing about that niche um and just you'll have less competition because um and you'd think they were counter uh, counterintuitive and there wouldn't be enough business out there but and this always surprised me when people think like that i mean um unless you're really not charging enough and I say um, I know quite a few business owners, and they'll charge two hundred pounds for something that they really should be charging two thousand pounds for. Um, for example, I, I know some um, I know some business owners over the years, and they've they've charged something like hundred pounds a month for SEO services. And um, the thing is the cost per acquisition for an seo client is more than 100 pounds um so and and it's and it's it's more than in some instances it can be more than 1200 pounds which would be the 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 12 times 100 because I, I know you know if if you're smart and you you know about lifetime value then you would have said oh michael about the lifetime value what about self liquidating um you know where you had spend or your uh, your acquisition or whatever cost cost per your staff to cold call or your own time or whatever you're doing um yeah it's, it might cost more than 100 but as long as it's 400 or something like that you'll break even at, at, at month four or if your gross profit's 50 percent, you'll break even uh, more like eight months in um and as long as it's a 12 month contract you'll you'll be okay on that but what a what a position to be in to to be just charging 100 pounds a month for for seo um what can you actually do for that i mean obviously if the competition's um not that fierce then I'm, you might be able to do something for that but you know it's usually like a drop in the ocean for that kind of thing so my advice to those people would be um well charge more money um and make it profitable because if you're only charging an under for that, how, how are you going to be able to replace yourself in the business, work more on the business uh, or anything like that? So when you're expanding your market reach, make sure that you, you've got a good product market fit and you're actually charging enough and it's profitable. Um, that's number one. When you're looking at expanding your market reach, um, actually just stick to a few things. 
Um, so if you do an exercise of writing down all your customers, writing down the sectors, writing down how you acquired them, writing down if they're profitable, um, writing down if you like working with them and all that kind of thing, almost like creating a matrix of uh, of the customers, all the customers you've, you've ever had. Um, then you'll you'll identify some commonalities, um, and one of them might be that a particular niche of bringing you the most profit in. So that might be um, home improvements companies, that might be uh, medical spas, that might be dentists. Um, and the thing is, as we, as I get to point two and point three, which I'm coming to shortly, when, when if you try to charge forward on multiple fronts. Um, and, and if you imagine when you're doing that, let, let, let's say you, you, you're trying to you're trying to work within ten different um, sectors, okay. So you're charging forward. You're trying to you're trying to make a dent in. Uh, you're trying to get market share from. Uh, you, you're against um, everybody who's niched, um, just providing web design for roofers. Yeah. Uh, you're going after dentists as well, so everybody who's who's uh, niched into dentists, and there's a lot of these companies who you're up, up against. So they literally just specialise in dentists, specialise in chiropractors, specialise in all these. So if you're trying to charge forward on multiple fronts, say you in ten different sectors, uh, and then if you compound on top of that, um, ten different services. Let's say a digital marketing agency, and you provide an email marketing web design, SEO, Google ads, Facebook ads, and all that kind of thing. Um, and unless your team's geared up for that kind of thing, unless as a digital marketing agency, you've, you've, you've cracked your Google ads and then you've, you've, you've started to start your, um, you, you know, your different service offerings. And then, um, th this is feeding into this in terms of your, um, you know, your, your, your value ladder. So you can get somebody on with your local SEO, somebody on boarded, a new client, and then you can cross sell them um, your Google Ads, and then you can cross sell them your video services, and you've got all your SOPs, your standard operating procedures in place in order to be able to do client fulfillment really, really well uh, with low operational drag, uh, low operational intensity, and all that kind of thing. Only then can you start to really um, push forward. So. Rule number one for me is to pick one thing. So pick pick one niche. If you've just done a, if you just write, write down all your customers, who, who have you got the best results for out of all your customers? Right, case study. Have you got a case study? No. Go back to that customer and say, look, need to get a case study. Um, do you mind if we do a video case study? Do you mind if we jump on Zoom? I'm, I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm going to use it online. Is that okay? Yeah. You get the consent. Um, then you can go to other companies uh, as long as there's no conflict of interest, as long as you're not giving, giving them some exclusivity to just work with them for, you know, nationally, you know, for the UK or America or wherever you live. Um, as long as you, you're fine to do so, there's no, no um, exclusivity or conflict uh, of interest, then you can package that up and, and go to... Say if it's a roofer, oh, got these results, got a 10x row as Google ads. Let's go to this other roofer who's more than a, they only want a 50 mile radius. So as long as you're not within that area, you can go to another um, business and then you can package it up. So imagine how easier that is than to think, oh, we've got these hundred, we've had these, we've had hundred clients all together, we've currently got. 10 customers they're all paying us a grand a month we're making 10k a month something like that they're all in different sectors and then we get an inbound inquiry and then we get an 11th niche to learn all about the business the lingo maybe it's drywall insulation soffits whatever it is you've got to learn all about that but then the other thing is if you're not niche specific, as in within a certain type of business, but then you've got all the products on top of it, all that is just just multiplying together in terms of the 
the operational drag. So, it, so, and I'm going to wrap up number one by saying expand your market reach by actually eliminating some of what you're doing now, the, the, the non-profitable stuff, the stuff you could go without, the stuff that's stopping you from scaling. Because if you're reliving the same six months again and again in business, then like Einstein said, definition of insanity. So that just about wraps up number one. Expand your market reach by eliminating things, not by adding things. Because people say, all oh, right, what am I going to do? Oh, what we're doing is not working. You're just not doing enough cold calling. So if cold calling is not working, you're not doing enough. If email marketing is not working, you're not doing enough. I'm talking about cold email outreach. If if your social media posting is not working, you're not doing enough. How many times are you posting once a day? Just post four times a day then. Yeah, but I'm going to annoy people. No, you're not going to annoy people. You're going to find an audience who wants to be informed about the thing that you do. You're going to find a new audience. Some people might drop off, but you'll find a new audience. Uh, run your business the way that you know that it needs to be run. You know where it's omnipresent and you you're getting in front of people. So that that sums up number one. Number two is only only when you've saturated um, a niche and uh, got your products so the and and your services um, so that they're, they're running really well. You know, at an eye level of maturity. I'm not saying perfect. Constant iteration, uh, con- continuous improvement. Only then you should diversify your product or servi- service offerings. So only, I'll just repeat that, only diversify your product or service offerings when you've cracked what you're doing. So I'm talking one product or service to one market and just one one way of marketing it. So cold calling, cold email marketing, direct mail, DMs, paid ads, Google ads, TikTok, whatever it is, just get really good at doing that one thing and don't get your shiny object syndrome. And also don't fall out with the niche. And also get your product really good at your service. Those three things. Think about it. If you've got ten things going on, if you're if you're one of these people who who are turning over four grand a month and you've got three businesses, cut out two of your businesses and do one. Just 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 cut two of the businesses and just run with one business. It's ridiculous having three two or three businesses when you're turning over. 50 grand a year or whatever, 48 grand a year. Just do one, do one thing. Get get one of them above that. Simple as that, simple as that. One thing to one, one persona and just get to them in one way. So it could be, you could say, right, I'm going to do LinkedIn. I'm just going to, I'm not saying don't have a process. I'm not saying that. You know, you don't want a, pro- a sequence of process. So, for example, it's good to have a process. You need processes because um, that's how you scale because you're going to teach other people how to do it, teach your team how to do it. But I'm not saying if you're doing LinkedIn that you shouldn't send them a loom, that you shouldn't send them a message, type a message in, then send them a loom and use some some kind of automation as well. Uh, stay within, you know, the uh, the limits and all that kind of thing. But you can email them as well. And that doesn't mean you're doing email marketing and LinkedIn and all that. You're just following the process, one process. So it could be you contact them on LinkedIn, then you call call them and then... But it's it's one process to, to get there, What one process that you're going to get really good at. Um, so I'm not saying that you can only call them. Or Michael's telling me that I can only call them, so I'm not allowed to email anybody anymore. No, call them. But as long as 
you know, you're doing it in a set way, you're doing it in a in an order, you're doing it in a predictable a predictable way that's measurable, that you can A B test various aspects of it, um, and get really good at it. So that so that's your that's your inbound or outbound method, yeah. And then your product or service. So if you're a digital marketing agency, um, or you're a digital marketing freelancer, and you want to grow, and you're doing lots of different things. Um, and again, I'm not saying I'm not saying um, if you do a website, don't SEO it, or if you do a website, don't set up some marketing automation with a contact form when something when an inquiry comes in, and you're going to tag them, and you're going to put them into a drip email. For me, that's a system. You're creating a system there, and that's fine. But what I'm saying is, don't move on to something else until you've got your product or service at a level of maturity, which is at least minimal, at least minimum um, viable uh, product, at least, um, and at least your skills in in implementing it and knowing everything about it and being able to explain it and being able to nurture clients, being able to um, FAQ it, being able to uh, sell it and market uh, market it and sell it you've got to have a minimum viable competency in that as well. So you've got to understand the thing. Um, you've got to be an expert in it. You've got to specialize in it. Um, and and that's another thing, the, the kind of should it be a specialist or a generalist um, debate. It, it's kind of both. You, you're kind of going to be a generalist because you know a bit about everything. You know, know a lot about everything. You've got to be really good. But, but it's also very simple in that you just need to you have a you need to have a few key things that you know a lot about as well like you know everything about and you're obsessed with them um and that's that's how it tends to work um because why else would and it's how you package it as well it, it's how you package it it's how you market it all that kind of thing but why would a business use you um if you didn't have a product that at least seems to be great obviously they're going to find that on the back end if it's not good but you've got to market it well so it's got to appear great it's got to have evidence so case studies work for other uh, customers and you've got to have a great great product and service as well and that that in a way will well not in a way that will sell itself having a good product or service and, and concentrating on that um so i'm an, I'm an advocate of having a great service i'm an av- advocate of um, client success um, of excellent service delivery because you, you don't want to have the opposite because the opposite of that is being a great marketer and, and just selling something that's not great but then just uh, basically burning through a lot of clients and that that's not going to be a way of um, running a business. So running a business is actually about um, getting all the free uh, things in the business right, the three main things, the marketing, sales and the service delivery. You've got to have them all right uh, and I think the best way of getting them all right is to is, is to start to focus. So I suppose what I'm saying there is diversification of your product or service offering um, it is about having um, having a suite of products or services, but but just just having one main thing until you get to a level where you can reinvest and you've got things ticking over nice because you don't want to be scaling and and setting on uh, staff or associates, freelancers, contractors, anything like that, uh, when you haven't even got your way of doing it down to a T. So if you can't even do it quickly, how how can you delegate it to somebody else? You're just going to be replicating that inefficiency, which brings me on um, to, the, to the next thing, which is improving operational efficiency. So here we're going to talk about operational drag. This concept of operational drag, operation, operational intensity. Before we get to that, I'm just going to wrap up number two. So I'm recommending that you diversify your product or service offerings only when you crack the one thing. Certainly don't. If, you, if, if you've got too many products, services, and you're serving too many different niches at the moment, cut it down to one niche, one main thing and one way of getting to those people like immediately um i'm not saying sack customers sack customers if they're not profitable um 
how do you sack customers? I'll do a I'll do a video on that. I went I went through an exercise a few years ago sacking some customers um by by literally putting the prices up um and, and the sack themselves basically. So I'll do a video on that if you want and my experiences with that. You don't want you don't want prof you, you don't want customers who aren't profitable. You don't want customers who you can't upsell or cross sell. You don't want customers who don't value uh what you offer. You don't want bad customers. You don't want customers who want to have that uh, subservient uh, relationship where they want you to be the commoditized order taker. Um, you, you want you want good business uh, partnerships, uh, and you, to do that, you've got to you've got to position yourself uh, in the market, right? Which is one of the pieces of marketing. Uh, speak with conviction have some results behind you uh, and have the confidence to walk away on a bad deal as well. Um, so get on to, so diversification of products or service offerings. Don't, don't diversify until you've, you, you've cracked the thing that you're in. You at least get it to a, you know, um, a good level, minimal, minimum viable product at the very least, but I'd, I'd go beyond that. I'd, I'd go, I'd, I'd, I'd absolutely crush that niche before I even um, w went any further on that um, and, and before adding new products and all that kind of thing. Because when you get a good customer, you, you do want to do more and more for, for them. So you do want to add things. But if you add, if, if you offer them a service that you can't deliver on, then actually that's going to, that's going to sour the milk for the, for the thing that you're doing for them originally as well. And obviously, they're going to then tell other people that it wasn't great. So you're better off just doing what you can, what you what you know you can get results from. With um, so let's move on to improving operational uh, efficiency. So that's the next one. Um, so this idea of operational drag. This is where um, you're trying to do too many things. Um, you might be a busy fall. Um, there's all, all kinds of things to this, but but basically. Um, if you're serving many niches and you're doing lot, you've got lots of products and services, but you're not at a level of maturity to be able to uh, fulfil those, then you you are essentially like running multiple businesses um, with multiple contracts, multiple email templates, um, m multiple SOPs, more than what you need, um, and actually you won't be able to unless you have tons of people fulfilling and you've got tons of people. Um, you know, working on the process, you're not going to be able to cope with it. So simplicity is is the key here by actually just getting really good at, at one thing and then just delivering that to um, to, to one uh, avatar, basically one type of client where you know you can get them results. Um, so for example, if you've, let's say you run Google Ads and you run Google Ads for roofers and you know that you can get them X amount per lead, X amount at ROAS um, in a given area. And all you need to do really is go to another area and do that thing again. It's turnkey. So you know which landing pages work, you know which uh, keywords work, you know you've got a negative keyword list ready to go. It's plug and play for that business, essentially. Yeah, there's some nuances. Uh, yeah, there's some uh, bits and pieces to change. But if you look at the constants, um, what they taught us in computer programming is there's constants and variables. The variables, uh, there should be fewer of those if you're if you've truly niched. Um, there should be a lot of constants. Uh, there should be a lot of things that are the same commonalities. Um, so what I would um, say is to improve your operational efficiency and reduce your operational drag and your operational intensity. Start to cut stuff out again. So it's the same as number one. Um, and it's actually the same as number two, o only add things once you've cracked the thing. So number three, um, you, you, you're just improving things by actually eliminating things. You're improving what you've got by focusing on that thing. Uh, Bill Gates talks about focus. What, what, what's the one thing that an entrepreneur should do to be successful? Focus. Focus on the thing. How can you focus when you've got te 10 different service offers and you're not doing hardly any of them? Uh, you know, as well as you could be because you're not focusing on them. Um, so focusing on one thing, you're going to put all your effort into that. 
into focusing um, on, on that one thing. So, um, and and just I'll just go go into you know a, a bit more detail just to wrap wrap up this video uh, on how you, how you can kind of think about this um, and actually do something, actually take action from this video. Um, and some of this is going to be painful to do, uh, but you've got to consider, you know, if you want the pain of regret or the or the pain of just being persistent and having discipline and and doing the thing, and, and you know, and, and taking the chance at it. Because look, if if you're currently look at all the things you're offering now, look at all the sectors as well. You've worked with a flooring company, uh, one flooring company in the last five years, um, and you know, did, did did you did you get a case study? If you didn't get a case study, why not? Um, did you get a review? If not, why not? Did you get them results? If you got them results, why did you not feel morally obligated to go and get more flooring companies' results? And why not just focus on that thing? Why not just focus on the if it's air salons, if it's nail tech um, salons or anything like that, and you got them great results? Um, why are you not speaking to other nail techs? Why are you then um, outreaching to just any any kind of kind of customer? Is it because you're bored? Because you got shiny object syndrome? You think that 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 niche is going to be the one that you're going to uh, be able to finally win at? The the thing that helps you to win is is consistency over time and doing the little actions over time uh, consistently over over a lot of time. Uh, to get the results so that you end up knowing everything about the niche you end up knowing everything about the product it's like with google ads with facebook ads i mean i've been doing this 15 years over 15 years started the company 15 years ago but uh, but bef before then um you know i'm working in uh in web seo um web design seo sales all that kind of thing marketing uh, so a lot of experience before that as well. But 15 years in business, um, I've managed to add more and more services. But we started off um, just provided SEO, just provided one thing, uh, just providing SEO um, and d d just doing that really well. And, and, and then we added other things. Just, just, we needed to have the websites. I'd already been doing websites uh, pr prior to that um but it, the folks were on seo all the marketing were around seo all all the uh vision for the company were around um you know getting getting more clients for seo but then you you start to add more uh services you, you had google ads facebook ads um all, all that kind of thing but you start with the one thing start with the one thing um you try to be all things to all people you just end up end up being uh no one to to anyone really uh so that wraps up the video um take some action on it um how do you take action i'll just summarize i to take action on number one expand your market reach exercise is get a timer like this from amazon right set it to 90 minutes like that. That's 90, 90 minutes twenty. Yeah, deep work, focused, no scrolling, no dopamine, anything like that. You're focusing on getting the task done. You'll get the dopamine when you've done the hard work, right? So you're gonna do some hard work. You're smart work as well because it's it's the right work to do, but you you're gonna work hard at it as well. You work smart and hard, and you're gonna write down all your customers you've ever had, if they're profitable what the lifetime value of your old company is, how do you work that out? All your customers you've ever had, all your revenue you've ever had, yeah? Take your revenue and divide it by the number of customers. So if, you, if you've made half a million and you've got what you got now, so uh, 100 customers, then your average lifetime value is five grand. Yeah. Because you've half a million, which is 500 grand, divided by your 100. So each customer on, on average has, uh, has paid you 
five grand. Yep. So what you then end up doing, so you've got your, you've written down, um, you've written down your, um, the average customer value, and then you're going to decide, right, who have I enjoyed working with, who's been a pain, uh, who's been profitable, um, let's get some more of those customers. And you might find that they're in, they're all carpet fitters, for example, or accountants. So you say, right, you make a tough decision then. You, you think, right, I'm not going to, I'm not going to fire any customers who are profitable. They can stay, but I'm not also not going to market to to any customers at, unless they're accountants because I've chosen accountants now as a niche. And what I'm going to do so I can expand my market reach is I'm going to stop any marketing for anything else but accountants. And I'm still going to serve these customers who are profitable and the customers who you've still got who aren't profitable, you're going to put the prices up and you're going to fire them yeah the chances are that you've not put your prices up anyway uh, for them in a while and you just do it like this you just say look you're not profitable uh well you don't say you're not profitable you say we've just changed our pra um packages unfortunately we no longer have your your package uh we'll put you onto this other package though um, we're going to have to do it in three months. So you're in three months' notice. They're either reasonable, can find another provider, and um, and you might they might end up staying with you. They might love you, or they might just be you know a customer who's not not ideal. So you've got to put your prices up in business. Um, hundred percent put your put your prices up, and one of the ways of doing it is is to repackage the thing, and it's your business. You can discontinue services, you can discontinue products nothing wrong with doing that um and people can still come along for the journey with you um you're still going to provide a fantastic service you just want to change yeah people don't like change generally um especially you know customers who don't value you but you, you need good customers to make a business work um so yeah you're going to go after the accountants for example and then you're going to realize as well, right, which services, what are all the services that we offer? Well, we had this one client once and they asked us to, I don't know, set up text message marketing. So we set up text message marketing, but we only did it for that one client. And it took us three months to learn how to do that. And we had to get a specialist in to set up the systems and all that. And then we ended up making a loss on that because we were going to actually um, add it as a new um service but we never ended up doing it because we we're busy with all this other stuff so then what you do is you cut it and you don't do it and then you you put your resources into what you can get what you know that you can get customer results with um so it might be called email outreach it might be seo it might be google ads whatever videography um so then that that's how that's how you then start to niche by its elimination and then um like I said, you keep your existing clients who are profitable um, and you, you only market to that particular niche and you cut down on your services and products as well if you've got too many. Um, and then one, but, but, but later on, once you've got to a stage where you know, you, you've set up teams for, for these products and services, you can then add things. You can then diversify your products and service offerings, which is the recommendation number two um, in these, out of these free business growth strategies. And then, last but not least, improving your operational efficiency. This literally um, comes as a result of uh, one and two, really. Um, but it's its own little section as well where you're thinking, right, we need to get really lean at this thing. So you're going to start streamlining your processes, but you want fewer processes because you're going to have fewer products, you're going to have fewer niches. So you're not going to have to have as many contracts now. You're not. You've not got as many... Uh, you know, if you're in Upsport or whichever CRM you use, um, Salesforce or whatever, you, you're not going to have to pick from all the niches. You're going to have all the templates and, oh, I've got one for dentists, I've got one for growers, and, um, you know, tr tr trust me, it's, it's a complete nightmare and it, you know, it gets inside your head. Um, so you're going to um, maybe invest in some new technology, um, you know, to, to help you to 
automate all the processes in but you need your sops obviously um everything needs to be documented um i need to get your feedback from your clients right now we're just doing accountants for this for seo we we'll just do seo for accountants we'll, we'll do the website and seo for accountants yeah so we'll build your website we'll seo it and just for accountants yeah how simple is that business you got one contract that, that can have seo and websites um that They've got to have them both together as well. You're going to say, right, I'm sorry, we only take on accountants where we, we do your new website. We take over your existing website if it's good. You've got to be in WordPress as well. If you're on something else, if you're on um, Yell.com, if you're on Wix, it, you've got to come over to WordPress to work with us. It's exclusive. We work with, we work with a lot of accountants. You, you, we're going to do it in WordPress. It's non-negotiable. And then we'll do your SEO as well. And it, how simple is that business? So all your clients are on WordPress. You can get the, um, the the developer licenses for the plugins that you need. So you don't need to do, so I said diversification of the products and services as well as the niche. So let's say you're a web developer now, web designer, and you you, you know you do WordPress, you do a bit of um, Drupal or whatever. You know you, you're doing all these different things. You do whichever CMS. Uh, com, uh, Content management system that the uh, client wants you to do J just a WordPress. Yeah, it's, it's used by up to twenty five percent of the world's websites anyway. Just a WordPress, just a one thing. Keep it simple. Uh, Kiss Kiss method, um, and then start to look at uh, in terms of everything from like um, staff training and things like that. Is right. We're, we're going to teach you this. We're going to teach you that. Um, imagine having to teach staff to to have to. Do 10 different things where you can just teach them to one different thing, you know, just kind of simplify it and distill it down. Uh, so that's in a, that's that in a nutshell, uh, free business growth strategies to help you to grow your business. Um, I'm Michael Greenwood, and I hope you found this um, useful or interesting.